in this world we are living, everybody is looking for breakthrough. Everybody is looking for financial freedom. Everybody is looking, uh, wants to be established in life. But I do know that there is a price to pay. There is a secret behind success. There is a secret behind rising. You don't just rise. You don't just rise simply because you are talented. You don't just rise simply because you are educated. You don't just rise simply because you have got what it takes. There is something more. There is a, there's a special ingredient. There is a secret ingredient which makes you rise faster. It's like a catalyst which activates this, the speed, the rate of the reaction. So for you to rise, you need to enter into a covenant. The secret for rising in life is the covenant, the power of the covenant. You have to enter a covenant with God for you to rise. And this video I'm going to show you how people enter covenants with God in order for them to rise in their business, in their finances, in their ministry, in all areas of, of your life. Hello guys, thanks for watching. I'm Cleo Faswanyama, Cleo with you. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you're watching me for the first time. In this channel, we talk about the deep things of God in Christ Jesus. We also do commentary videos on what, what's happening within the body of Christ. If you want to donate, use the information at the description box or at the comment section which I've pinned below. How do you rise? People don't just rise. You know, you see people rising. You think you think it's their, it's their hard work. You go and try working hard. 10 years, nothing happens. 20 years, nothing happens. You, you become stranded. Why? Because the secret to rising is not just hard work. The secret to rising is not just diligence. It's not just diligence. The secret to rising is not only consistency. You need to be hardworking. You need to be diligent. You need to be consistent. You need to be smart. But that's not enough to make you rise in life. You have to enter into a covenant. You have to enter into a covenant. And our God is a covenant-keeping God. Our God is a covenant-keeping God. Everybody in the Bible who rose, rose on the platform of a covenant. Without a covenant, you will never rise. That hopeless situation, no job, no finances, in your family things are not going right, nobody is rising in your family, problem here and there, if you want to change that situation, if you want to be the one to help your family, enter into a covenant with God, and your life will never be the same again. It's only a covenant. God responds to covenant. No covenant. Don't expect anything from God. What is a covenant? A covenant is a, is a, is a spiritual connection. Are you hearing me? A covenant is a spiritual connection between an individual, a group of people, and a deity. A deity can be God, can be devil, can be evil spirits. So that connection which you have between you and your God, that's what is called the covenant. So you cannot have a connection with God without a covenant. This is why even when Jesus came, he brought us, us all in into the covenant of the New, New Testament, which was purchased by his blood. We, we are living in the new covenant. Now, this is a general covenant. I have to make it clear. It involves everybody and anybody who gives his life to Christ. You enter into that covenant. It connects you to God. But now, there are, there are, there are specific covenant. What do I mean by specific? Where God enters into where you have a one-on-one -on -one relationship, a personal relationship with God. When you have a personal relationship with God, you walk with God, you fellowship with God, you develop intimacy with God, there is a certain covenant you enter with God. And I'm going to show you how you enter that covenant with God. It's a covenant. You enter with God. Now, it is on the basis of that covenant, God will lift you. It will be on the platform of that covenant, God will lift you up. You know, many people have been deceived that because Jesus has died, so we are under the new covenant, so it's all it's done. Yes, I believe in the finished works. Then why are you broke? Yes, you believe in this finished work. Why are you sick? Yes, you believe in the finished work. Why is your family in bondage? That should, should, should put some question marks. Yes, we have the, the finished work. But even the finished work itself, the finished work itself, you have to access the finished works. To receive the finished work, you also need a covenant. A covenant is just a personal, you know, how people say, I have a personal relationship with God. Yes, a covenant is that personal. You know, when you relate with somebody, 
You know, there's how you talk to that person. There's how you relate with that person. Listen, there, for instance, you, you may feel as you're watching me, you have so many friends. You have so many people whom you whom you, you relate with, but you don't relate with everybody on the same level. There's some people whom your relationship with is deep. There's some people when they come into your house, they stay at the gate. Some they they can enter the gate but remain at the compound. Some they enter the gate, pass through the compound and stand at the door of the house. There are some who get, come inside, pass through the compound, enter through the door and sit in the sitting room. And there are some can even access your kitchen and there are some even can access your, your bedroom. All these are relationships but they are not the same. Now it, it is the covenant which makes you stay outside. It's the covenant which makes you stay at the compound, at the door and for you to get, to get, to get access into the inner chambers of Anybody, there's a covenant, there's a relationship, there's how rela your relationship is. It's the same thing with God. We are all children of God. God loves us all. But there are some in God's uh, kingdom. Yes, uh, God loves them, but they're still at the gate. God loves them. Why? Because you have to develop your relationship to a level whereby you can enter God's bedroom. It's a relationship thing. It's a relationship. A covenant is a relationship. Now, I have to give an example how people rise. How people rise. I have to give an example. Have you heard these things of the Illuminati, the Freemasons? People even, listen, what the devil does, the devil usually copies what is the kingdom of God, but he perverts them. He's a copycat. Now, when people enter the Illuminati, they enter it through a covenant, a blood covenant. You have to enter a covenant with the devil. And that covenant is where you sell your soul. Understand? So people even in the Illuminati, they rise based on covenants. They are able to buy big cars, own big houses. They are able to become influential. Even their careers are able to reach at their peak. Why? Because of covenants. The covenants they make with the devil backs them. These celebrities, most celebrities, you see them. They are rising, not because uh, they are talented. No, most of you are talented, more talented than the celebrities you see on TV. But the reason why they are rising is because they have a covenant. A covenant is what lifts people. A covenant is a lift of man. Be it the devil, be it of God, anything called covenant lifts you. But it's only the blessings of God that makes great and adds no sorrow. The covenant of the devil it will make you rich. It, many people have been rich through the money covenant. Richest people in the world are, and are inside the satanic covenant. It makes them rich, but gives them sorrow. A lot of sorrow. What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? But it's only the blessings of God, the covenant of God, which makes you rich and adds no sorrow in it. So, these, these, these guys, they enter into covenant. Even those people who go to witch doctors, they have to enter into a covenant. And that covenant, there they are demands. Every, each covenant has a demand. There's a covenant demand. There are demands which have to be met in every covenant. In every covenant. For it to produce results. Now, when you enter, a, when you're employed in a company, you sign a contract. That contract is a form of a covenant. And there are things which are expected. Are expected of you from that covenant, from that job contract, and in return, as you as you as you abide with the law of the that contract, that covenant, you'll be able to get your your earnings, your your salary. So everybody who is employed, you have signed a, a contract. You have signed a contract. Now that contract is a covenant. So that's how you are able to get your salary. You are able to get money to pay school fees, to pay rent, to do many things, to build a house. Why? Because you have entered into a covenant with that company in, in, in the name of a contract. So in that covenant, there's a part you play and there's a part in return, there's a part which the company plays for you. It rewards you. It's the same way in the realm of the spirit. Now, Abraham, Jacob, Isaac, 
everybody they operated through covenants. They dealt with God. You cannot talk with God without covenant. If you talk with God without covenant, God does not hear you. He's deaf. He's deaf. He can't hear you. He can't hear what you're saying. That's why God introduced the systems called covenants. When you're born again, you're automatically in the covenant of Christ Jesus. In the new covenant. It's true. But that covenant will take you to heaven. That covenant will give you new life. But for you to realize the benefits of inside that covenant, for you to, to, to maximize the, the, the blessings of that covenant, you need to enter into another personal covenant with God, whereby you, God gives you his demands. Now this is why you see the work, with, everybody's work with God is different. Why is it different? Based on the covenant that God has made with them. Now, you are, you are broke. You, are, you want to rise. God asks you a question. Why should you rise? Why should I lift you? God is asking you that question. Why should I give you money? Why should I give you a husband? Why should I give you a child? Why should I bless you? Why should I take you abroad? Why should I help you build that house? Why should I help your business? Why should I help your ministry? Why? God is a businessman. It's true. He's a businessman. No, you can't just tell God, give me this and, and just take it because, no, it doesn't work that way. This is why many people have tried. Oh God, in Christ Jesus, I take it in Christ Jesus, 10 years, nothing. Oh, in Christ Jesus, I received my miracle in Christ Jesus. In the finished work, 20 years, nothing. God is still watching you like this. He said, my, my dear son, my dear daughter, if only you understand how I work, I work on the platform of covenants. God works on the platform of covenants. Now, I want God to rise. You have to make sure God has something in it. It's a contract. It's an agreement. When I rise, what will God gain from your rising? Once your business is successful, what will God gain from your success in business? You want a child, what will God gain from that you by from him giving you a child? That's what I'm talking about. Listen, is that listen, the world is a world of transaction. Believe it or not. You can say Jesus has paid it all. It's true in a way. It's true, but if you just relax, do nothing because Jesus has paid it all, you will see how the world will turn you upside down. With the world we are living is a world of transaction. Even faith is transaction. Have faith, receive. Have faith, receive is a transaction. God set this world in a in a transaction mode. It's a it's a world is a realm of transaction. Whether the spiritual realm or the physical realm is a realm of all those two realms are realms of transactions. Transaction. Now, you want a baby. What, will, what, what does God have? What will God benefit from it? If you check the Bible, God, the God people, the people God blessed, it wasn't for their own. God told Abraham, I will bless you so that you can be a blessing. He didn't tell Abraham, I'll bless you so that you can have private jet, so that you can have a beach house and enjoy yourself. No, I will bless you for a reason. You say, why God, do you, why do, you don't know why God blessed Abraham? God blessed Abraham so Abraham can be a blessing. And God blessed Abraham because through Abraham, us are partakers of those blessings. So it wasn't just God blessed him because he's a generous God. No, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't. It doesn't. The Egyptians gave the Israelites gold, not because uh, God wanted them to be rich, not because they just, for, for them to have gold and bling blings. No, that gold was needed for them to build God, a tabernacle, a temple. That's why they were given the gold. Everything's for a reason. We are living in the world of transaction. You want a child? You want a child? There are, there are women in the Bible who are barren. But when God gave them children, those children were prophets. Those children were used of God. You just want God to give you a child. 
so that so that you can show your illness you also can you also can give birth it doesn't work that way god must start you have to dedicate that child to god say god if you give me a child this child will serve you go be give your child god must have a place in your business you want to rise in your business you are not supporting any ministry you are not partnering in any ministry you are not bringing christ influence in the marketplace god is not interested in your, in your business it will go down can't you see why the, the these illuminati people are rising why because every time you watch their music videos they give you signs they do these things demonic signs why it is a covenant if i raise you up you are going to do certain things for me you are going to bring influence to the devil that's what they, they, these people do that's why you go to some companies you know they are they are they are devilish things which they do it is the part of the covenant you want go to lift your 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 business there is no prayer room in your office there is no prayer room in, in your company and you expect your company to rise you are joking it will never rise you remain that way what god must have a share give god a share give god a place in your in whatever you are doing and see yourself rise you rise as if the devil does not exist there's a time i wanted to change my life i tried everything nothing worked nothing was working i entered into a covenant with god said so god if you do this this thing will be doing this for me you will be doing this for you so you enter the covenant with god god is a businessman no? god is a businessman so okay he says in the bible come let us reason together yes come let us reason let's talk like businessmen let's talk like career people Don't say say God bless me bless me bless me for what? Bless you for what? For what? For you can enjoy just enjoy. Uh-uh. It doesn't work that way. God must have a take in whatever thing. God make me famous for what? So that you can show yourself show people how talented you are no. God make me famous so that I can lift your name. So that I can influence people for your name god will make you famous god increase my business i want my business to grow why so that i can support the work of god i can support the church i can support the ministries i can send money to support the spread of the gospel i'll be helping the poor i'll bring influence to your name i'll glorify your name when you do that god will lift your business so so what that's good what share that's good have in whatever thing you want god to do for you now enter a covenant now that's why you enter a covenant with god enter a covenant lord i enter i enter this covenant lord if you do this to me i'll be i'll be doing this and w- listen you, when you enter a covenant you, you you don't wait for that thing to happen you start doing it now start doing it now i am where i am because i've entered covenant with god and there are some covenant which have made with god which i'm doing it right now i made a covenant with god to build him a studio and it has started right now however small this is but this part of me fulfilling the covenant i made with god and through this platform i will rise and through the listen you will only rise through covenants fulfill the covenant you are selling food yes you want god to help you sell food do you pray do you pray before going to work do you put god ahead of you are you paying your offerings are you supporting the work of god do you give some food you do make some food some not all the time some sometimes you make some food send to, to orphanages sometimes you make some food you bless people who are less privileged that's how you enter covenant so you tell god god as i'm doing this help me to rise because the more i'll rise i'll do more of this god must have a part in what you're doing in order for him to partner with you so that he can bless you david did not kill goliath just to show He was a mighty warrior no it's for the name of god to be lifted 
if the name of Jesus cannot be lifted in your through your business forget about telling him to bless your business if your name of Jesus will not be lifted through your career forget about telling him to bless your career if the name of Jesus cannot be lifted in that your company forget about telling God to bless your company if your the name of Jesus is not lifted in your ministry forget about God he will not help you he will leave you you will fail until the day you know how to make how to make covenants with God I want today enter covenant there some people who have entered covenant like God my covenant to you I'll be giving this kind of money to support your work is not the covenant is not about how much i tell you about how you yourself you enter into a covenant with god say god for me this is what i'll be doing for you do it there's some people who entered covenant you know covenants are different there's some people them is to give money to the work of god there's some people who have covenanted them, themselves they'll be cleaning churches that's the covenant they made nobody tells them to clean churches nobody tell them but it's the covenant they made a decision by themselves and god honors it if the covenant have entered enter a covenant in your house does god have a place in your house do you have an altar in your house do you have a place of prayer in your house do you teach your children the, the things of god and then you want god to bless you how he will never bless you I'll give him a, give him his place and you will see give him his place you know it's shocking to see the muslims here in i'm i mean I'm, i'm based in mombasa and there are so many high rising you know apartments you know, very tall apartments like 15 floors you know they are built by muslims in every in every though in every those in every, in every one of those tall buildings there are mosques they put mosques for people to worship Allah and then you are surprised why they keep on building tall buildings for you Christians you are still praising God singing in iron sheet churches i'm not trying to insult you i'm not trying to insult you but i'm trying to to bring a point in every tall building they build they have to put a mosque in every every building they build have to put a mosque muslims go to their if any company owned by a muslim there's a mosque there's a place where they go to pray even if they are the ones who build malls they have a place where people go and pray but for christians ah they say that's a waste of space let me put more shops this way we never rise you don't know the power of covenant enter covenant to god and their life will never be the same again if you have any question kindly contact me using the information at the description box i love you i hope you are blessed see you in the next video